Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome to another quick Monday markets, but on Thursday because Donald is a permanent holiday YouTube video for technical roundup. Again, as always brought to you by FTX. Speaking of FTX, the reason the duck isn't here is he is partying it up in Tomorrowland, I think it's called, some sort of snowboardy European festival thing, and having a good old fun time with the FTX team, and I'm here delivering critical market updates. So, you know, leave a like on the video just for that and the complete absence of my social life. But I'm sure the duck is having a great time, uh, and then he's away pretty much for this whole week. So you've got me instead, and hopefully me plus a guest this Saturday, so that should be fun. So quick market update, in terms of a reminder of where we are, I'm not gonna spend too long on this given we covered it in the last video in some detail and also the short clip I posted on Twitter. TLDR, monthly resistance, top of the range 58K, monthly support 35, 37K, monthly midpoint turned resistance at sort of 45, 47K thereabouts. You can see this is the market's been testing support and has now moved up to resistance. If we look at that on the daily time frame. That's where it really gets interesting because while support has been creeping up and making sort of marginally higher lows, resistance has also been, I mean, you can arguably turn this into some either triangle structure, but in any case, you know, patterns aside, which isn't the most important thing, it's that market structure this entire time hasn't been broken to the upside, right? Like if you look to the left, you've got a very clear sequence of lower lows and lower highs, uh, and there's been no higher high on the daily time frame to write home about. And higher highs are usually kind of the first meaningful evidence of a high time frame trend shift or break in market structure. If we also look at this level, you know, it's been tested depending on how you count, once, twice, three times, four times, and this would be the fifth test. So maybe we're in a super cursed range where the market can't break a single level and just moves between support and resistance until the end of time. That would certainly suck. But generally speaking, when it comes to TA levels and whatnot, uh, the more you get consecutive tests from the same direction, especially if those consecutive tests are on average producing weaker reactions, the higher the probability that the, the level rolls over and you get a bit of a range breakout, or at least an attempted range breakout. So that's why in terms of trade ideas, unless this turns super ugly or really prints some sort of failed breakout on the daily time frame, maybe something intraday, I'm not too keen on selling this level. Uh, you know, no one says fifth test, best test, not, not super... Uh, convinced on that trade, unless it shows me something really compelling, like, you know, spike the highs and then completely roll over. Something like that will be fine, but I definitely need the kind of failed breakout deviation portion of that in order to get involved in the trade, because otherwise it's just a bit, you know, selling the same level flat uh, is not fun for me, especially again, fifth time, I don't want to get run over on this. So as per the short video, I don't want to spend too much time repeating myself again. Um, if it breaks, I'm gonna leave it, be that a break of uh, resistance or break of support. I'm not interested in fading that move. The only scenario under which I think a fade is appropriate if it's risk defined. And by that I mean the market makes an effort to break, obviously fails, and then as it comes back into the level or consolidates or does whatever, you have a very clear invalidation for short ideas on the failed breakout. And in the same vein, you would have very clear invalidation for long ideas on the failed breakout, right? But until you get that type of evidence that the market is, well, two things really, A, tried to break from a significant range, and B, obviously failed in doing so slash wasn't accepted. I'm not interested in fading these moves blindly in the absence of these two things, right? Attempted break, evidence that the attempted break failed. Uh, and so looking at this now, this is the fifth test, maybe you get a daily close above and that pushes higher. That's kind of what you wanna see. Anything else that starts really stalling um, begins to look just like eternal range type of thesis, which, which would be really annoying and really tricky to trade. Uh, one thing I want to mention, uh, you know, the focus of this video is, well, we know what to do if the range is intact, right? Um, if it breaks and fails, there's a move to the downside. If it breaks down and fails, there's a move to the upside. And we can generally assume that this kind of coiling structure between 30 something and 40 something is going to stick. Obviously, the more interesting question is, what happens if the market rips up? What are some reasonable targets for the move? So on and so forth. So I think there are a couple. In terms of the upside, which is the one I'm going to entertain at the moment, given, you know, obviously we've got like a short-term uptrend type of thing going on. Uh, the first level that comes to mind is the top of the monthly cluster, which comes out at 47.1. 
uh, and it's nicely clustered uh, just above all of these swing highs as well. So in terms of really short term trading levels, uh, you know, monthly time frame has been pretty solid. Just looking at the chart, that should be self evident. So why not expect a test of monthly levels, 47.1 or thereabouts, uh, if this pump continues? Now, if it really starts to rip, uh, I think there's a really nice confluent area that we spoke about a while ago, but because of how rangy the market's been, uh, it's been a lot less relevant. So as before, if we add our kind of sandwich of boomer moving averages, you can really start to see they converge around this 47 to 48k handle. Specifically, we've got all the high time frame trend following signals to the 21 weekly moving average, the 50 moving average, the 200 daily moving average, all of them seem to converge around this kind of 46 to 48k handle, uh, and also the top of this monthly cluster. So that that's really th the first meaty significant high time frame reversion area. That would that I would pay attention to, and maybe there's even a short-term trade when that gets hit, uh, and the market pulls back to this prior area of then support potentially turn to resistance. I don't want that to happen too quickly because then it, you know I don't want like an aggressive retrace of this move. But quite simply, in terms of targets, you can see we've got TA reasons for thinking that 47.1 roughly there is important just as a monthly level. But then if we add all of our trend following tools, you can see there's extra confluence around this 47, 48K handle because all the trend following metrics land there as well. So at the very least, if the market continues to rip, I'm expecting some short term resistance there. If the market is accepted above kind of X marks the spot, you'll have evidence of A, the monthly midpoint being turned to support and B, medium to high time frame trend flipping from bearish to temporarily bullish and that would be really cool and at that point would i think open the doors towards a much meatier move towards 56 58k etc um so the bearish scenario is what would get me worried is as mentioned uh, a failed breakout which falls back within the range that would suck or a push into these high time frame moving average confluent resistance that in the same vein does not find acceptance above and starts to roll over in any case. You can kind of see a recurring theme that if this market's going to have legs and certainly legs towards the range high, uh, failed breakouts just aren't an option, be it in the short term range or whether higher time frame trend following signals fall. There's a lot of meat between 46 and 48K. A lot of trading systems will be activated through those levels, be it purely technical or trend following, whatever. Uh, and that's really the area that I'm uh, paying attention to. Short term, it's the fourth level of resistance. I do kind of want to see us at least try to break this range. And then we can arrive at more firm conclusions when the big boys at 47 to 48 get tested. Uh, if you want to be on guard, failed breakout back below 43 44 would be shit and in the similar logic you know this is like our bigger target any failed acceptance below you know that tries the 48k plus and fails would also be shit uh, but as long as obstacle one is 43k that's the fourth test of resistance i do want to see this trade this 48 cluster uh, and that's really the big decision point for the market uh, any failed breakouts not interested in holding on to those uh if we manage to churn through this area and get a daily breakout which sticks i do really think it'll be more or less a fast move towards 58k or thereabouts so eyes on the prize probably the most confluent level yes short term we've got 44 because we've tested it a million times it's the obvious market structure level if we keep popping up i don't think it's fully out of the woods until we do the bigger test at 47 48k where all this kind of stuff aligns and that's when i think you can start to develop some really meaningful views on this market. Range bound until proven otherwise. Let's see if we can break resistance first and foremost, and then we'll come back to see if the market is accepted through the range boundaries. Because a lot of the time, you know, we want to make this TA stuff interesting and whatever, but really mo often you'll have the market consolidating between two boundaries, right? And then it will have, it will attempt to break through that boundary. And as it does, we have to make the determination, is price going to be accepted through that boundary or not. If it is, we expect further upside or continuation in the direction of the break with momentum and whatnot. If it isn't, we look to trade uh, the failed breakout or the failed breakdown back within the range. That's like mostly bread and butter stuff, especially when dealing with the consolidation. That's all I've got. Live stream coming on Saturday, hopefully with a guest. If not, it'll just be me rambling. Hopefully these videos are helpful. If you have questions, leave them in the comment section. Um, and yeah, I'd love to hear from you. As always, get the FTX app at the very least because they're keeping Don occupied and partying. That's all from me. Um, 43 matters, 47, 48 matters. Failed breakouts suck. That's all I've got. Take care, like the video, YouTube algo stuff. Love you guys. Bye-bye.